today guys. This is absolutely more of a, a vlog than a um a, an ASMR video but I um wanted to pop on. As you can see Christmas is getting underway here. I've really been excited for Christmas this year. I've I don't think that I've ever properly kept Christmas. Uh, my parents I've mentioned were very uh, reserved. So, um, yeah, and the last few years since I've been married and living with my husband, I think I, um, I sort of, I wasn't committed, <laughs> you know, I was, um, dipping my toes in here and there, but not actually, uh, fully embracing it because I still felt that guilt of what would my parents think and that kind of thing but um uh, one of our pastors was preaching on something in I think it was first Corinthians the other week about uh, eating from the temple and you know the fact that for some reason it really hit me when he was preaching about fact that there is only one God. There's not just one true God that ranks above all the other gods. No, there is only one. The others do not exist. You know, so they were talking about how the people of, of Corinth, some of them were feeling guilty or whatever because uh, they were eating this food that had been sacrificed to idols and they thought that maybe the, the other gods had attached themselves to it or that kind of thing and Paul was basically saying no because there's only one God the others don't exist and I know that there is such thing as um, you know demonic possession. Personally, I think that um, a lot of psychotic class mental health issues or mental conditions are probably closely linked to that. I think I've told you guys before, once there was this um, woman with schizophrenia uh, who had not taken her, her medication like she came into where I was um, where I was and was saying look I haven't I haven't taken my medication I'm obviously um, you know nothing she was saying was making sense uh, she was jumping everywhere within her sentence like she was incoherent uh, we could gather that she hadn't taken her medication and she was kind of I don't know if she was asking us what to do about that but um, she was completely incoherent, except for when she looked at me. When she looked at me, when she spoke to me. She spoke in perfect English, in perfect sentences. And after she left, everyone was just quiet. And they, they turned to me and they're like, are you okay? That was like so weird. But... You know, that's just one thing that makes me think that, you know, that demonic possession kind of thing is still there because, you know, my being the only Christian in that room, what an incredible coincidence that she would speak perfectly coherently, that she would be of, that she would appear to be of sound mind when she was talking to me, but only me. Um, that just, uh, I think, really solidified for me that that sort of theory that's always there in the back of my mind that, you know, that's 
that's what that is because it talks in the Bible about casting out of demons and uh, that sort of thing. Um, but I, I say this because on the topic of Christmas trees, <laughs> Christmas trees are, um, you know, a, a Druidic tradition in uh, Druidism. They would worship trees. Trees would be brought inside for the winter and decorated and all this kind of thing. And um, I think that a lot of people are convicted around that part of Christmas specifically because of the connection to another religion. Obviously there are no other gods. I know that a lot of churches at the moment are all caught up on this, you know, demons attaching themselves to things and spirits attaching themselves to things and, you know, life bonds and all that kind of thing and I I have not seen that in the Bible. I've not seen it. Uh, definitely, if you're like dabbling in stuff that's trying to communicate with the dead or speak through psychics or that kind of thing, that is literally talked about in the Bible. Uh, but, you know, if you go to a shop and you buy a pair of pants and, you know, the shop owner might be a uh, a witch or someone who identifies as one at least uh, you're not going to be buying you're not going to be attaching a, an evil spirit to your life because you bought that thing um, so I really love I'm loving the book of first Corinthians it's got so much in it um, they've been saying that it's the bread and butter of the gospel which is a really cool way of looking at it like it has really practical life lessons that address a lot of topics um, so in summary all that to say that i'm so excited because i no longer feel guilty about celebrating christmas we don't have a christmas tree um and we don't do santa claus um but we do christmas we do the joy of christmas we decorate house i've been making um dried oranges and threading them through with uh, beads and uh, rosemary from the garden and I've got some cinnamon sticks I've been using uh, and, and just decorating in a way that reminds us of the joy of this season of the joy of Christ and love and the gift of forgiveness I'm just, I'm so excited and I think it's really, um, it's really meaning a lot to me because I have been struggling so much in the last few months. I've been struggling a bit since Ruth was born, but in the last few months, it just seems to have got so much worse in my mind, so much harder in here with um, negative thoughts. And there have been a few little uh, family related dramas that not between myself and Shane, but, you know, uh, the rest of family. <laughs> um, you know, things that come back to people believing that I'm a bad wife. And people almost trying to convince my husband that I'm a bad wife. Um, and just having that uh, brought up knowing that people would think that of me, uh, people who don't know me very well, people who don't spend time with me. Um, you know, that I think has really contributed to, um, to the, the strange spiral <laughs> that's been going on. Uh, but the more I I think about it, I've been really working hard with, um, you know, combating the negative thoughts, replacing them with, with truth, with God's word, with love, with joy, with peace. Um, the more I think about it, the more I come to realize that even acknowledging negativity is a trap in itself. 
because when when you have sadness and negative thoughts um, or you feel a way that you don't like you have a choice um, you really do and your options are to immediately say no I'm not gonna do that I'm, I'm just gonna say no to all of this I'm gonna immediately replace that with joy and God's word your second option which a lot more of us follow, is to indulge that, is to follow that train of thought, is to go, oh, well, why am I feeling that way? What is causing that to happen? Who is responsible? You know, really working yourself into such a complicated mess. And the reason that I think that that is a bad way to go now is because as Christians, we know that no one is going to be perfect in this life. We know that our spouse is not responsible for our joy. I mean, yeah, if, if they come home drunk or something, or, you know, are caught in a really bad sin, we should, you know, uh, bring that up to them and, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, I'm talking about when you just, you feel sad, you feel... Uh, I like to use the word flumpy. You feel flumpy. And instead of just saying, no, I'm going to choose to love my husband. It's not my job to rule over my husband. It's not my job to correct his actions. It's not my job to tell him what to do. The only person who, you know, is above my husband is the Lord. So I'm going to choose to, you know, say no to that. I'm going to choose to replace that. God's truth. I'm going to choose love. I'm going to choose grace. And I'm going to choose to let God do his job. And that has really helped me a lot. Even today I was watching uh, Sassy Masha's uh, video about coming to Christianity and I loved right at the end when she was talking about her daughter getting baptized that her daughter was coming up to her and saying mommy you're you're my gift from God and hearing that I, I was crying by this point in the video <laughs> um, but you know just hearing how a child would say that it's so uplifting and so encouraging and you know it made me realize these people in my life my husband and my child they are my gift from God why would I let other people take that joy from me why would I let them change that why would I let them corrupt that joy that I have um, So yeah, now I'm still uh, struggling to remember what to do. I'm still trying to combat my stress levels. I've just, I've fallen back into a trap of being very overwhelmed very easily, trying to keep track of everything. And I, I've sort of forgotten how to let go a bit. You know, my new approach is, you know, not even indulging those thoughts, not even indulging that feeling of flumpiness, of sadness, of annoyance, of despair, or whatever it is, not even going down the rabbit hole of trying to unwind that whole thing when in reality it does not matter there's this other channel that i i follow um it's called cinema therapy i think it's this bloke who's a licensed therapist and his mate who's in movie making they review um movies 
together and I think I was watching their review of Marriage Story and the therapist said, the thing is never the thing. You know, if you think that you're angry at yourself about them not doing the dishes, if you think that you're hurt because uh, your spouse's relatives behaved in a certain way, you're, you're probably not, you know, the thing is never the thing. It's about connection, it's about how connected we feel to our spouse. And I've found that if I indulge those negative thoughts, if I go off on that, that huge, huge tangent of trying to work out the thing, I just, I get overwhelmed, I, I can't work it out. And it's true, it always does come back to the fact that I don't feel connected with my husband. I don't feel connected because I've allowed these things to come between us. I've allowed the thoughts and the feelings and the opinions of others or the stress of the day to take my focus, to take my joy. And, and it has broken the connection that we would ordinarily have. So uh, I'm not saying that you should 100% of the time ignore your feelings. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. You should definitely acknowledge them but you still get to choose if you indulge them. There's a difference between indulging, indulging and acknowledging. So I will acknowledge the feeling. I'll recognize it. I'll go, oh, I'm feeling slumpy. Look, it's probably about this thing over here. If it needs to be addressed, we'll, we'll address it. But, you know, sometimes it's just that thing that you can't really put your finger on and you have the feeling, but then you're like, what is this, what is it, what is it? So instead of going down that rabbit hole, I'll see the feeling, I'll be like, okay, cool, but I'm going to choose to go this way instead. <laughs> I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to choose to remember how much I love my husband, how much I love my child, how much I love the life that I've been blessed with, the gifts the Lord has given me. I'm going to choose to worship. I'm going to choose to release my stress. I'm going to choose to exercise. Maybe read the Bible, go to church, you know. So, that's a tiny little update. Uh, my only concern going forward is about these uh, dried oranges. I'm just really hoping that the ants are not going to be attracted to these. I mean, they don't smell like orange anymore. Uh, they don't smell like orange. They're, they're crunchy. There's no salginess. My only concern is because they feel a tiny little bit sticky, which makes me think, wait a minute, is that something that the ants will want? <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. I might do an actual ASMR video about making Christmas. You know, I asked my husband the other day, how do I make Christmas? I've never made Christmas before. You know how you walk into some people's houses and it just feels like Christmas? I've never made Christmas happen. <laughs> um, so I might do a video. Making Christmas making my little decorations and stuff. It's just been lovely hanging out with you. I hope that you're doing well. And I look forward to seeing you next time.